Hey Canucks fans, how you doing today? Truly, I ask you how you're doing. Yesterday could have been one of the biggest days in franchise history. If only we had overcome our minuscule 3% chance and secured the first draft pick, the first overall draft pick for next month's draft. Of course, that will be Connor Bedard. And of course, it's not us. We stay at 11 and it goes to the Chicago Blackhawks. So let's break this down. I'm there watching the draft lottery with my son, Jacob, 16, 15, 14, 13, and 12 to Ottawa. So no changes in the bottom five. So that's a good thing that we didn't see any changes because that means no one, no, none of those five teams actually won the lottery uh, and A, limited our chances and B, knock us down one further spot. So of course, we wait for the reveal of the number 11 card and it's still the Vancouver Canucks. In fact, there are no changes. 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. 3 was the first change. 3, Chicago jumps from 3 to 1. Columbus falls from 1 to 3 because Anaheim won the second lottery. So the top 3 is Chicago, Anaheim, and Columbus. A lot of people upset that Chicago got the first overall pick. Not so much because of our heated rivalry with them because that was over a decade ago. It was more because of the, the mostly because of the Kyle Beach incident, not incident, the, the whole sexual assault case, the way that it was handled, the way that the Blackhawks were punished, but they weren't punished. Um, they weren't punished by losing a draft pick where other teams have lost first round draft picks before for what you could argue were lesser offenses. So Chicago keeps their first round draft pick. They come in with, I think, an 11 to 13% chance, and they get it. They get the first overall pick. And now uh, on a team where Patrick Kane is gone, Jonathan Taves is clearly on his down years. They have now their new franchise player in Connor Bedard. Uh, people saying, well, will he pull a Lindros and refuse to go there so he can play here? No, he's not going to do that. But um, check in with me six years from now or seven years from now, and maybe Connor Bedard returns home as a UFA. That's really all we can hope for let me know where you're watching the draft lottery and what your initial reaction was i posted my reaction clip on twitter and on youtube got a lot of a lot of views on it which is pretty cool and it's basically me and jacob reacting for about 20 seconds and then you see my lovely wife gail in the background um sort of interested and then going back to her popcorn so make sure you check it out and i'd love to know how you react and where you were watching from now more importantly with the canucks pick let's presume they keep it they can always package it uh, move up. They can always package it, move down. Who knows what's going to happen? And we heard Patrick Alvin talk about taking the best player available, not drafting by need, but picking the best player available. And his reasoning is, if you draft by need today, in two or three years or four years from now, when this this player is going to be an impact player, your need might be completely different in two, three, four years from now. So it's best to to pick to draft by best player available. I wish Jim Benning followed that in 2015 when he picked. Uh, you'll levy over Kachuk, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll leave that uh, right now because then I'll just get really sad. Huh. It was 2015, right? Yeah, because uh, 14 was Besser, 15 was, no, 14 was Vertanen, excuse me. Sorry, 2016. 15 was Besser, and 2016 was Oli Levy. Anyways, I digress. At 11, I know the first things I read and heard was, oh, the Canucks could pick up one of the two highly thought of right shot defensemen. One of them is David Reinbacher, a bigger, solid, um, you know, sturdy defenseman. And the other is the Pelika, who's more of a, a two-way guy, a better skater than St. Reinbacher, but certainly not as big. And then, you know, right shot defenseman always sounds appealing. But then the more I read and the more I listen to, because I admit, I'm not, pretty, I'm not a, a prospects guy, but I'll read up on, uh, on enough of them, at least 15 guys, so I'll know who the counts are drafting or at least know something about who the Canucks draft when they actually draft on June the 28th. And everything I've read so far says that actually taking Reinbacher or Pelica at 11 might be too high. Might be too high, but I just finished a team might I just finished saying a team shouldn't pick based on need, but if teams think they need that right shot defenseman because they're hard to come by as you guys know, then maybe their their draft stock gets inflated a little bit. And maybe they get even picked inside the top 10. And I remember even Canucks After Dark, Parker and I were saying, oh, well, maybe one of them will drop to the Canucks at 11. But maybe both will be there at 11, and they still might not be the best pick. So there's a lot of guys that you can pick there. There's some hope that maybe Zach Benson falls at 11. Dvorsky is a good player. 
There's so many other good players around. We know it's not going to be obviously Bedard, Fantilli, Mitchkov, Carlson, Will Smith. Those are seem to be the consensus number five. But then maybe from five to ten, it's not. Uh, there's not a lot of consensus. There's still some centers there. There's a couple skilled wingers in there, and then of course the two right shot defensemen. So we have we have six weeks to basically do some scouting reports and break all these guys down. But I guess my my major point is now it's on May 9th. It's too number one. It's too early to say who it's going to be, who the Canucks are going to take in 11, presuming they keep their pick. But the more important thing is, is they're going to have options. They're going to get a good player. Yes, um, they're not going to get a Fantilli, Bedard, Michkov type player, but they sh- should get a player who can probably contribute one, if not two years at the most down the road. And if it's a winger, maybe a second line winger. And if it's a D-man, maybe uh, maybe a, a second pairing D-man. So uh, eventually. So that will be fascinating to watch. The Canucks are meeting. They're doing the pro scouting meetings right now, obviously, because they, they, they planned it intentionally to do it right after the draft lottery. Now that they know where they're drafting from, and um, as, a, as of now, at least, and we will go from there. So let me know, um, realistically, who do you think, who do you want the Canucks to pick up at 11? I mean, if it's a name that I've never heard of, I will do some research for sure. Finally, the Canucks were fined $50,000 for breaking, I guess, terms of the CBA by, in essence, having guys on their team practice with coaching staff. The guys can skate wherever they want, however they want. But as soon as you bring coaches into the fray, then it becomes more official. And apparently, Dakota Joshua... Jack Stabnika, among others, were skating with the Sedins the third week of April. Now, I'm not sure what one week of sessions is going to do. It's not going to put you over the hump, especially when it's Joshua and Stabnika, but um, it, rules are rules, and the Canucks were fined $50,000, and uh, they said, with the warning, that if they do it again, the fine is going to be a lot more. So $50,000 is a lot for me, but um, it's not. I'm sure it's a, not a lot for the organization. Patrick Alvin, to his credit, and his immediate availability, took full responsibility. He was asked, don't you have someone that... Um, kind of knows is an expert on the CBA. And now Patrick Levine says, yes, we do. But ultimately, the responsibility is with me. So he didn't throw anyone under the bus. But yeah, someone dropped the ball. And not only do I want to know who's supposed to know this kind of stuff, but who told on them? Who's the snitch? Who who actually went to the NHL and said, hey, I think that Dakota Joshua and Jack Stemika, I'm not sure why I put my hand up. Why I don't, I think that Stemika and Joshua are skating with the Sedins. Ooh. So regardless, $50,000 fine. And then um, the Canucks likely won't do it again, or at least they'll be much better at hiding it. So Canucks fans, lots happen on a dreary Monday. Actually, the weather is nice. On a warm Monday in May, the Canucks retain the 11th pick via the draft lottery. They get fined $50,000 for skating after the season ended with some coaches on the ice. And I love your reaction on all of it. Leave a comment below. I'd love to read, react, and reply. Shout out to my sponsors, Vancey Experts Real Estate. Perform, transform, personal training, weight loss. Thank you, legendary Lucas Gates, legendary Justin Credible, legendary Carol Bovenlander, legendary Andrew Chang, and to Hall of Fame and franchise members as well. And thanks to all of you. I always appreciate you. Never take you for granted. I forgot to mention, I'm off to Seattle. I'm going to Seattle now with a buddy. We're going to check out Game 4, first time in Climate Pledge Arena. Dallas Stars, Seattle Kraken. I'll be heading home tonight. I'm going to be back online tomorrow with my next... I'll be streaming of the third period of Vegas, Edmonton, tomorrow night. So something to look forward to tomorrow night. I get to look forward to watching the Seattle Kraken and Dallas Stars battle tonight from Climate Pledge. Okay, now I'm going to wind up. So as always, uh, subscribe, like the video, become a member, upgrade your membership, leave a tip. And thanks for your support as always. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, and take care of each other. Have a great day. God bless. Go Canucks, go.